Hey, this is the name, Jim Rickless. And believe it or not, whether you like it or don't like it, learn to love it. Because you have to listen to Wrestling Is Real. It is the best thing going today. Woo! The worldwide leader of podcast in excellence. The king of podcasts radio network proudly presents The Wrestling Is Real Podcast. Because wrestling needs us. And welcome to episode 829 of the Wrestling Is Real Podcast. King of podcasts here with you for another program. Getting set for Elimination Chamber, which is this weekend, and everybody in the wrestling world, the fans, are all talking about production changes. Production changes. Oh, new camera angles, zips, you know, sweeps, pans, zooms, woo, flashy camera angles. We took the red spotlights out of Raw, and oh, look, they got the one camera shop that goes from outside the arena all the way into the arena. Those are all bells and whistles, but it's enough for people to go ahead and get all caught up on it. Hey, wrestling fans don't understand the whole deal with television production. I I understand that. It's okay. I'm a media guy. I've been doing it for 30 years. Plus I I'm so much embedded behind the scenes of this. It's, it doesn't surprise me. And I guess the question is, does it really matter? Like, are you going to watch raw? Are you going to really get caught up in what they're doing on the show? more than ever just because they decided to do that like the question is all right because of the fact that they brought out the changes that he did to the set to the entrance you know all of that did it really make much of a difference well i mean we can look at the we can look and see what we have here in terms of the you know what it's done right look i want to go ahead and talk about that we can so the raw so far since the start of the year, you know, we always look at this part where what are they doing in terms of the ratings and how they perform so far as we're getting into WrestleMania season, we're now in the middle of it in the thick. So at the moment, 1.75 million viewers for the first week of raw coming back new year's day. Right. And then they get dropped off because they have what the goals, no, the no college football playoffs, I believe on that day. And then you go on and say, okay, then we have what a Monday night football game for the NFL playoffs, which took a hit, which gave Monday night raw a hit 1.464 million. Another one for the national championship of college football, 1.418 million. And then it bumps back up to 1.685. And then it goes back up again and they're back into the 1.908. So that's the post Royal rumble episode. And what have they done since? 1.89, 1.747. I haven't looked what the new ratings look like. I'm sure somebody has that somewhere if I want to go and find that and look it up. But, you know, is it really making much of a difference? Are we seeing a difference in the... Oh, they also had the day 2500 this weekend on Monday to go up against. 1.870 million viewers. 1.87. Okay. So they're saying that, oh, there's something happening where... You know, we had a couple of matches put up together. The IC title match with Jey Uso and Gunther, right? Cody Rhodes and Drew McIntyre starting off the night. So they sandwiched that in. Okay. And then last week, SmackDown dropped an overall ratings slightly, but maintained his 18 to 49 rating from the previous week. And that's despite the fact that The Rock made an appearance that there is a ceiling for viewership on the Friday night cable ratings, which is quite interesting. Now the SmackDown ratings, I didn't get a chance to see what those look like, but let's go ahead and give that also a little chance to go and shine as well with the rock coming on. And by the way, if I didn't make mention one of the best heel rock promos we've heard, he was tremendous. And I do want to kind of run through that again and just take that into perspective. So 2.55 5 million viewers for that. And the return of Rock and Roman Reigns, 7 point, a point seven five rating, 18 to 49. The NBA All-Star Celebrity Game was going on during that time. So they were doing well with that. But must I must say that what they did 
with The Rock. And what he did to go ahead and really stir up that crowd was incredible. We'll talk about that a little bit later. Because that promo, we need to go back up and just epitomize what wrestling's all about and what they did with the storyline and how they did bit a, a couple of different angles that we're going to be following along from now until WrestleMania and what happens to the rock and Roman. Now that they're aligned together, which that was the big story that it came out on Friday. And then of course the bloodline now back together in some synced and Jimmy Uso screwing Jay out of an IC title chance where he lost a belt. He lost a chance to go and win. And there have been some people out there that said, oh, there are some internal formats that said that Jey Uso was scheduled to win over Gunther. They were going to make the title switch, but did not. Okay. I wouldn't have necessarily, I mean, I understand they could have done it. And sure, they could have done it for shock and awe. But for Gunther to go and lose it just on a random show. Yeah. We're all kind of feeling like, is that, was that going to be a good idea? That's the part we don't really know what to feel about that. But anyway, the one thing I didn't talk about a few weeks ago, which was the biggest change that everybody all talked about, was the previous WWE chief of global TV production distribution, Kevin Dunn. You know, the guy that was always, you know, known for when you see chair shots, we have to see the chair swinging from, you know, in, in a very jerking motion. And the way he did camera shots, we all kind of heard about that. Everybody complained about it. I got it. Okay. Like you knew a WWE production when you saw it. So Kevin Dunn left at the end of 2023. An organization replaced him with Lee Fitting. He has been appointed the head of media and production. He joined the company after being at ESPN for 25 years. He oversaw production on several properties, including Monday Night Football and College Game Day. Did some really good accolades. Listen, resume solid. So create a sports type feel to the program much more than ever, which they try to do more or less on Fox. Obviously Fox sports must have had, must have had some real input towards that. And then we go along to what they're doing on USA. As we see with Vince no longer being involved, this is where the company's making their changes. They look more like a sports feel. I don't know if it makes much of a difference in the programming. It's still the content. Okay. You can make this a sports related property and kind of do it like you want, but it still comes down to the content has got to be good. And what you're doing with the show itself, you can do enough production angles and packages and all this other stuff you want to do with the show to flash it up. Sure. But it's still going to be the content. It's still going to be the storylines. It still has to be what they're going to be doing over there, which you know, I don't know if they're doing so much of what they could be doing with the main roster in terms of the mid card, because underneath what they have in terms of the elimination chamber matches coming up, Gunther's title run, Logan Paul's U S title run and the women's title runs right now for Eos, Eos guy and Rhea Ripley. Like what else is there underneath all of that? What else is there that really stands out that makes much of a difference and what would make a difference that production changes are going to make a difference too. Like, tell me that part. Like, we've seen vignettes go on backstage. We've seen different things go on where, okay, you're changing things up a little bit. All right. A little bit of exposure for stars to try to get something up. But there's not real development for any of these stars ahead of that. And on top of that, some of them have been tarnished. Okay. Some of them have been stained in the blood of Vince, Vince McMahon screwing them up. And there is nothing that Vince McMahon, or that, that Triple H or the team right now can do to fix that. They cannot rehabilitate or restore any of these stars like that without major gimmick changes. I said that a few weeks ago. We're still in the same spot right now. It doesn't make a difference. You don't want to accept that, but that's just the way it is. Now back to Lee fitting the new head of production media and production at the WWE, right? So Changes are being made subtle as the company moved to more of a sports-based presentation. Alterations were obvious for Raw on Monday night. The company utilized a video package for Cody Rose and Drew McIntyre, something that's often been safe for pay-per-view matches. But we're in WrestleMania season. And you know what? Don't start, don't start getting over here so quickly, okay? Let's just keep that in mind. 
don't start getting yourself so far ahead and say, oh, this is because of what's going on right now. No, this is WrestleMania season. Let's see if these things are going to change around. Listen, they go around here right now until April. We're also in, you know, for some people would say this is, well, for Fox, this is also ratings period, right? They're in February sweeps. For, you know, USA, it really make, doesn't make much of a difference. They just have the time right now to build back their audience of money nice because they're unopposed. They're not going to deal so much with NBA or NHL or other things on night one network TV or cable TV for that matter. Like they're not really hurting with much of that. And, and there's no award shows. I think there's going to be in the way of really cutting into them anyway, either. So some of the changes they had, the red lighting that would be seen at shows on raw is largely gone. WWE now is eliminating the crowd. So you actually can see the crowd now because he get full sold out shows. Incessant camera cuts were absent from the show too. And WWE also utilized a drone shot during the second hour as the camera began outside of Anaheim's Honda Center and made its way to the ring. Okay. Sure. So all these things were changed and made up. Okay. That's fine. But I guess this is all bells and whistles. This is just, it's window dressing. The aesthetics do not matter unless the storylines are better unless the characters are more compelling. And if you don't understand that, then you haven't listened to this show for the last 12 years because that's just the way it is. 11 and a half years, but still I'm rounding up. So I want to take from awful announcing that really went into this pretty extensively. So there was a number of changes that were made. We talked about it. New camera angles, technological advancements, formatting changes, and an emphasis on variety. What what do they do? Do they watch like heroes of world class championship wrestling, and they just they listen to Mickey Grant and Bill Mercer talking about production? Like, are we going back to those days, the Channel Thirty Nine days? Are we like reinventing and re, you know, imagining sports production or wrestling production? Come on. I mean. Okay, so you had a camera up in the ring where you could see the tags being made and you know you get closer where you're on the floor and you can see, you know, Cody Rose being laid out by Drew McIntyre at the end of the show. All right, fine. But the fanatics out there, the ones that just remember they are inside that WWE bubble. They can't help themselves but just like anything that they do over there is good to them. That's what matters to them. That's what they care about. Right? So they see this going on and they're like, oh, wow. Like imagine the star, you know, those people that are on Twitch or, you know, they're somewhere live streaming the show and there are, you know, hundreds or thousands of people that are watching with them and they all go like, oh, and they all have their clips that come on after the fact and they all make responses. I used to see them on TikTok all the time until they kind of dropped off because TikTok started stopping them. I don't know. They started banning them or whatever. So then people are going on to X. No, these changes to WWE production are really good. Crazy good. You can really notice the change in production in WWE. Who was telling them that Kevin Dunn was doing a good job? The, ch- the change in production makes WWE look so much better. Look so much better. It doesn't matter. And the first thing to talk about with Cody and Drew is the pre-match video package for Cody and Drew. A min- 90 seconds where they put together. Okay. They're not doing so many of those packages in the first place. And they're just starting out for WrestleMania. All right. We used to get these packages all the time where there would be three, four minutes long at a time per angle. This is normal. This is nothing new. I mean, what are we doing? Revisionist history here? Like I know the WWE likes to go ahead and change the history of certain stars and certain things that go on outside of their company. But the co- but when the fans start doing it, Oh, like this is the, the best thing is this sliced bread. No, we've seen this before. Okay. Drone shots, different camera angles. Okay. But then other shows might've done it or you didn't like it or whatever. It's like, but oh, this pre-match video package, uh, it looked good. The gate, they give it a different list, a, a different look to it. But listen, that production team is rock. The post-production team over there in Stanford, Connecticut, you know, also with new facilities, by the way, because they're in new global headquarters. Yeah. They're kicking ass. All right. They always do. All the graphics on that show look fantastic. That That's not even like a question to that. So we're seeing that and it's WrestleMania season and we're seeing a package for Cody and Drew. Yeah, some random match. Sure. But there's enough to build up to the match. 
but they're not going to do this for every match. They're not going to do this for everything that's going on in the show, are they? Hmm? No. But that's the first part. And while such pre-match packages are nothing new wrestling, they also involve often reserved for pay-per-view programs. But why? If this were college football, the NFL, you wouldn't only hype your biggest games of the season, you would promote multiple games each week. And by not airing any promo packages on weekly television, you're essentially training your audience to believe the episodes are skippable. Okay, you really think it's that part? No, you want to go and promote the fact of, of what you have? Yeah, you have certain matches that go up every week. You know who does a pretty good job of that? But unfortunately, there's a ceiling on that program. Is Tony Khan on AEW? Even TNA does a pretty good job. They promote matches ahead of time. We know about what matches are going on. Listen, during the middle of the Tony Storm, uh, oh no, the Diana Prazzo Madison Rain match, right? We were seeing the full lineup for Rampage. They ramped it up because they got coming up on Friday night. They're coming back after the All Star weekend, and they have got like four or five matches going on, racking it up, coming up. So they, that's one of the things they wanted to do. Another change they mentioned was the conclusion of the Rhodes McIntyre match. Michael Cole, Pat McAfee broke down McIntyre's victory with a telestrator. <laughs> oh boy. McAfee used the telestrator before on programming, but the instance came in the context of a storyline he was involved in. This time it was more of a sports like presentation, albeit with some of the ridiculousness that pro wrestling often lends to. So I'm going to play this back real quick. Yeah, the telestrator, the fucking telestrator. Listen, what are we, John Madden in 1985? This is new? Listen, it's it's campy. It's you know novelty. That's all it is. Listen, I'll play this back, Rooker. Hear the, the telestrator and hear McAfee, McAfee's commentary as he break down the end of the match. We're back on Monday Night Raw. We're going to go to Pat McAfee and the telestrator now to show us what happened at the end of that matchup. Listen, we had an absolute banger, and it was at this moment that that man who wants to finish his story at WrestleMania thought that he Circles had Drew McIntyre Cody's dead head. in the rights. And they go ahead and run it a little bit. Look at who showed up. Who's that? Oh, I don't know. A man who has his eyes on greatness and a thumb that was about to pierce a throat. Mm. Run it. Solzico interrupts. Got it. That was ended in the worst possible fashion. Yeah, true. Whenever Drew McIntyre, Cole, tell me what you see here, pal. I see a hypocrite. That's what, what I see. What do you mean by that? Because Drew McIntyre blamed the bloodline for costing him oh a title God. a couple of years ago, and now he takes advantage of the they bloodline. They circle McIntyre's face, his eyes, and they zoom on it. What Drew McIntyre would do from benefiting from the bloodline, and that's a Claymore kick to the mouth. One, two, three. Drew McIntyre's scumbag run continues. Wow. So people were actually impressed with that. By the way, I'm glad this is not this this did not get more likes than I thought it was going to get. But like seriously, somebody put this out there. Cesaro Hot Tag put this out there on X, and then we move along. And the most well perceived production shift was the drone shot and the show second hour. So they were outside of Anaheim's Honda Center, and then it traveled inside, presenting a unique view of the sizable crowd. And here's Cole. As the second hour comes in, and this drone shot goes from outside all the way into the arena. And again, been quite the night tonight. It's still to come on Monday Night Raw inside the Honda Center. Gunther, Jey Uso, battle for the Intercontinental Championship. So it swoops all the way in. Place is now, you couldn't put the drone over the arena. I guess they can't do that part. It doesn't matter. Like, I mean, okay, you can put whatever camera shots you want to show to the arena. Listen, the crowd looks good out there. It's sold out. Okay, fine. But this is nothing special. Watch. All these little things you're doing right now, you know, this is all like, okay, we're going to test and tune. We're going to see what works better, what we're going to hold on to, what we're going to keep. And then they had a thing where, the broadcast acknowledged Netflix executive sitting in the front row and UFC star Michael Chandler came on with a live microphone to call Conor McGregor and the drone shot made Raw feel like an actual event and a happening for the audience in Anaheim. And there were other segments that felt very ESPN-like too. Oh, the promo battle with both of them on camera? Well, maybe off on the announcing doesn't see enough of wrestling. I know the wrestling fans on here, but they kind of mentioned that as well. Come on. And there were also separate studios where R-Truth and Jackie Redman took part in a studio show style feature and a breakdown of how competitors 
qualified to take part in an, in an upcoming, upcoming Elimination Chamber match. And WWE also employed some other tactics. The emphasis on variety throughout the show was apparent, especially compared to recent years. So, according to Awful, on announcing, they say oh, the Telestrator could use some tweaking, but it would be impossible. And by the way, this is all done live. It's all done live on the, on the fly. Which, it looked a little bit wonky, because let me tell you this, too. If we're going to get stuff done live, here's the other thing i got to say this as well. We don't need all these bells and whistles going on live. This doesn't make a fucking difference. You know what you can do? And by the way, Tony, the way EW does it, but they could also do something more here in WWE where... How about getting back into doing some more of the theatrical stuff, right? Let's get some more vignettes being done where we're getting built up to other things. I can only done a little bit of it, but something better, you know, like there are some things they could be doing that are backstage promos. They could be also pre-taping much more than ever, but they're not like there's still a thought, like everything has to be done live where there is. So, and also this is also ESPN, like this, this schlocky, like ESPN, you know, college game day, Monday night football, Monday night countdown, you know, Inside the NBA, NFL Today, NFL on Fox NFL Sunday, all these pregame show type things, okay? With what they're doing on with the crowd. You know, like I mentioned Lee Fitting was also part of all those multicasts that they would do on a regular basis, where they would have like five or six channels for the for Monday Night Football game with the Manning cast or another cast of this and that. Or if it's, you know, college football, national championship, here's a radio call. You know, radio for the radio call for one team. Radio call for the other team. Here's the coaches together. Here are some players together on couches and all that stuff. And they do all these things to just like, okay, multicast. Let's see if anybody gets together and wants to watch all that's going on in one shot. Okay. So they did that. And like I said, I'm looking at this and I'm saying, we're all supposed to be impressed by this? Like, come on. Come on, leave fitting. Listen, I'm glad you're over here and you want to create some all difference, but let me tell you, it still comes down to the fact that it doesn't make a difference to me whatsoever. You need to get the storylines with some real character development. This is still a creative problem. This right here with the production changes, when you're still seeing shitty storylines and the same people out there every week, what are you going to do? We're going to shoot the new day differently this week. We're going to have alpha Academy do something else with another camera shot or a telestrator. If you think this is something that's going to make such a significant difference, you know, then you're, you're missing it. You're missing it. You, you don't get it. But Hey, some of my fellow podcast wrestling brethren, we're going to talk about it because you know what? That's what the Twitter audience is doing. The X audience, they're all talking about it. Well, good for you. Good for you. It doesn't make a difference to me. It doesn't matter. But anyway, hey, 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 you know, go right ahead. Enjoy yourself. You know, to your heart's content, you enjoy what they did right there, and you think it makes so much of a difference, and that's what's going to make you watch Raw. You think that the ratings are going to go any higher? Tell me something. If the production changes make, make Raw on USA Network break 2 million viewers, come back to me and talk about it. Come back to me and talk about it. It's not. It's just not. Okay? That's all I'm going to say about that. There's just not much more to say. Now, what's more important is the Elimination Chamber. We got that this weekend. And there's a lot of things going on with that, with the matches they all have set up. So let's get into that part. Because that's more interesting to me. Like, I thought we were going to be doing a preview for that. But no, no, no. Everybody wants to be talking about production changes. Production changes. Get the fudge out of here, man. Come on. So stupid. It's fine. It's fine. Uh, who am I to go ahead and complain about it? But like everybody else wants to go ahead and go after it and get all caught up with it. Like, okay, yeah, whatever. That's fine. Now, wait, I haven't mentioned the fact that No Surrender is coming up this weekend for TNA, but we'll probably take a minute and talk about that for a second. You know, see what they've been doing. But so far, we have the following matches all set up. In elimination Chamber matches we got set up right now for the men. Let's start with the women first. Well, women first. 
Becky Lynch, Bianca Belair, Liv Morgan, Tiffany Stratton, Naomi, and a returning Raquel Rodriguez, which nice to go and see her come back. I know she had issues with a particular medical condition. I didn't really pay attention to what it was or really what it's all about, so I do not want to speak out of turn. Men's Elimination Chamber match. You have Drew McIntyre, Randy Orton, Bobby Lashley, Ellie Knight, Kevin Owens, and Logan Paul. All right, let's look at the couple of the names they have here. Because this is also telling. For the women, they're obviously a little more willing to go ahead and daring to go and bring certain stars up into the Elimination Chamber match. The fact that they brought Tiffany Stratton into this to qualify. And she's part of this now. Otherwise, you're basically dealing with Naomi, who's returning back here, and now a prominent star that could definitely be a contender. And, you know, they could build right back up if they want to. Becky, Bianca, Liv, all been very much part of this whole mix. Naomi in the past. So now Raquel's part of this mix new, and Tiffany Stratton's part of it new. Interesting to go and see what they want to do with who will take on, you know, Rhea Ripley. And the setup for that Elimination Chamber match. So we can see that WrestleMania match finally take shape coming up this weekend. And by the way, the show in Perth, Australia. So it's on Saturday and it's at seven o'clock. So if I'm correct, I got to check the time and date here. Hold on. Let me just check time and date. Hold on. All right. Because if I'm going to check time and date and I try to figure out the timing for this, for this weekend, so I can figure this out. Let's go with Perth and let's figure out the time. Because right for me right now, the clock is currently, I'm recording right now, 11.37 p.m. And it's currently 12.37 p.m. in Perth. So they are 13 hours ahead of me. Therefore, if the show is at 7 o'clock, am I right? Do I mean I got to go ahead and watch like what? The... If I'm going to watch, then what am I going to do? Like, that means it's going to be what? If I'm right. Oh, and by the way, they, they don't have to deal with the daylight savings time. That's not anything they are affected by at all. But if they're that far ahead, that means that seven o'clock Eastern time in Perth would be what? 8 a.m. on Sunday morning. No. No, actually, it's the other way around, isn't it? So it would be 8 a.m. on Friday morning for us, correct? Yeah, because right now it's already Thursday afternoon. And if we're putting ourselves like again, if we're going to set ourselves to say, okay, we want to know what the time is going to be for a particular area, then that's the difference, right? So if saying, and this is what I'm just going to do a Google search just to make sure I got this right. 7 p.m. AWST is what time in Florida? So 7 p.m. Western Australian time would be 6 a.m. Thursday if I'm looking at that right now. So if I'm looking at this, that means, right, so 7 a.m., or 6 a.m. Perth, it's going to be 7 to 6 a.m. Florida time where I'm at is when, is when it's going to be on. So, like, listen, on Saturday morning, I'm not going to be waking up to watch it. I'll watch it after. So, if I do a post show, it will be Saturday night right here, kingofpodcasts.com. So, clear up the confusion. Just know about that. I'm taking from there, I want to go ahead and take one thing that they talk about here when it comes to. Bleacher Report, they put out their version of what are the case for every wrestler that could win Elimination Chamber and the match for the men and women. So they go into that. And so they go into the card itself. Rhea Ripley and Nia Jax, let's make it pretty clear. It looks like that Rhea Ripley will probably win. We're expecting that. We also know that besides the women's world title, there will be an undisputed WWE tag team title match with Judgment Day, Finn Balor and Damian Priest defending against the new Catch Republic, Tyler Bate and Pete Dunne. NXT stars coming in. So the whole thing they had with the Brawling Brutes, 
That's all done. And Pete Dunne now has been teamed up with Tyler Bates, so NXT UK is back once again. Now tell me, do you feel any different about this team at all? You know, does it make much of a difference? Just out of curiosity. Because I don't see the difference. Like, we're not building these stars up to be something more. New Catch Republic is just a name. But that's it. That's all it is. Nothing much more. So does anybody feel like this hot new team of Tyler Bate and Pete Dunne are going to actually win the tag team titles? No. It's just a match. We're not going to see a title change. Just bet on it. Pretty much. So the case for the men's elimination chamber match, according to Bleacher Report, they say that Kevin Owens is super over. Great worker, a destiny style. And Chaos has established history with Rollins, making a story between them very relatively easy. For Bobby Lashley, two-time WWE champion, over with every audience at this point in his career, missed WrestleMania 39, brief cameo as the Under the Giant Memorial Battle Royal winner, and Lashley and Rollins would be an interesting feud if they decided to go that route, but we know that's not going to happen. We know it's not going to be Kevin Owens, I don't believe that. I don't see that happening. Those are two stars that right now they've already had over there and they've already kind of, they've definitely saturated a lot of main event storylines with both Kevin Owens and Bobby Lashley. So listen, they're perennial favorites. That's why they're in this match. And there's nobody else that they have on the main roster ready to step up to take their spots. And as long as there's not... Kevin Owens and Bobby Lash will be there. Same thing with Randy Orton. Now, Randy Orton's coming back after, after Survivor Series, after a year and a half away from injury. Orton and Rollins will be great. We've had that. Of course, remember Rollins and Orton together in the biggest, one of the biggest RKOs we ever saw from Randy Orton to Seth Rollins. Remember that. And those fought, those guys fought each other. And then Drew McIntyre, who's already been going up and at it with Seth Rollins and the hottest heel in the Raw brand. And we know that after the whole deal with CM Punk, which should have been the route that we're going to go, well, we're not going to get that. But so far, they've done a lot of work with Drew McIntyre to build this heel character, injuring CM Punk, victories over Sami Zayn and Cody Rose in recent weeks, setting him up on a path towards WrestleMania. So Drew McIntyre, Seth Rollins could be the logical choice. And Logan Paul, he is the outsider looking in. So the U.S. title, not a consideration right now. Like that could just be thrown up after the fact. So Logan Paul rebounded from last year's loss to Seth Rollins and won the U.S. title over Rey Mysterio at Crown Jewel and defeated Miz, the cash is taken elimination chamber. So now you go Logan Paul and Seth Rollins. And I think personally, I think I would go with Logan Paul and Seth Rollins for the World Heavyweight title. I mean, I don't know what you can do with Drew McIntyre or with Bobby Lashley or with Kevin Owens. I don't know. But I think Logan Paul would be the one. Now, the other one they all say here is LA Knight, who has now moved over to the Raw brand. And he's got a lot of popularity. The thing is, too, is like this. They talk about the maximum male model's failure. But let me ask you this right here. Did the Max Dupree character totally fail? Did it have enough time to fail? Because to me, it was the whole gimmick that was not good. But the Max Dupree character didn't have to change. Do we understand that? Max Dupree did not have to be changed. He was a super agent, right? And the maximum male model was this thing. He could have gone on and done something else. He could have gone on and become a manager to some star and move on and become a wrestler himself. He doesn't have to be Robert Stone, but he could absolutely go ahead and go into something else for himself and eventually get back to wrestling. But they didn't want to do that. They just said, no, no, we're going to just, I would have preferred him to try to stick with the character and go with it. But no, no, LA Knight was the Eli Drake character. We worked for the WWE, WWE, right? For NXT. And he comes back in here. So now this L.A. Knight character, because he does a couple things that the Rock and Stone Cold did, great. And it's the Eli Drake character we, that some of us already remember going back to 2016, 2015 in Impact Wrestling. 
It's the same character all the way up to this point, current day. She had supported Crown Jewel among the Saudis, they say in this story, where he challenged Roman Reigns to the undisputed title. It's fine. But again, it's just a one-off. And for him to keep talking about, oh, we almost beat him, almost beat him, whatever. So Bleach Report says, that, oh, booking him to go over and challenge Rollins at WrestleMania may not be the present the most ready-made storyline, but the anticipation for a match would carry two of the most over stars in the industry that would help carry it. Yeah, whatever. By the way, we're going to get a World Heavyweight title feud now. It's going to be what? With six weeks. Now, you can go ahead and say it could be Drew McIntyre and then just drop it right in. But with Logan Paul, yeah, to get that short run in there, I, I can see that part. I don't know. And Logan Paul having both belts, U.S. title, World Heavyweight title. I can see that happening. I can see them doing that route. Why, why not? It wouldn't hurt them to do it at all. And then on the women's side, they go along and they say that for Liv Morgan, you know, no other competitor makes as much sense to win the, t the match like Liv Morgan to see her and Rhea Ripley take on each other. Now, Liv Morgan was injured by Rhea Ripley and forced to vacate the women's tag team titles and missed six months of action. So you got a storyline ready made to go. And she can easily go into the company, into the WrestleMania with a personal story to tell against the fellow NXT exports with similar main roster success. Yeah, so that's not a that's a good a good point. Raquel, she returned to win a battle royal that cashed her ticket to Perth. And while she might not have much of a storyline because of her injury, she has history with Rhea Ripley, both as friends as opponents. So reestablishing the NXT feud onto the main roster. Naomi, with an emotional return at the Royal Rumble, she has not come back to company to be merely be there. So Naomi and Rhea Ripley, I'm fine with that part. Fresh rivalry. And, you know, Naomi is being presented right now as she returns back from being Trinity in Impact Wrestling as the former Knockouts champion. Hold on to that belt for a long time. Right now, keep her as a champion. Keep her up in that mix. And then Becky Lynch, we already talked about they've been teasing a, a stare down with these two. So... This has already been going on for a while, and I think that the writing has already been there. The Enough seeds have been planted for Becky Lynch to go ahead and win this match and for Becky and Rhea to go on to WrestleMania. That could very much where they're going to go, but I think that's what they're going to go with anyway. And for Bianca, she's obviously dealt with Rhea Ripley in the past. Last was a year ago. Little buzz about a showdown between them. But no found. It's not going to be. A, it's obviously going to be a foundation for their match if they want to go. They also can talk about how NXT defined their careers, and they will be co-covering stars for the deluxe edition of WWE's 2K24 in April. So then Tiffany Stratton, the outlier, biggest underdog, tools to win, potentials limitless, fans react to her athleticism and egotistical persona. You know, you could pull that upset. If you feel like you need to pull that out of your hat, you could do that. But I think we go with Becky. And Tiffany Stratton needs to just get a match with somebody on this roster. Maybe it's Bianca. Maybe it's Liv Morgan. I don't know. But I think there's another story that can be told where she gets a featured match, but not a title match. Way too soon because she's not going to win if she takes a title match now. We're not going to see that switch over. No, I don't think so. All right, I want to go ahead and bring up where can I go with this next? We can talk about John Cena being on Howard Stern today and, and the whole deal now because Cena did have to confront questions about Vince McMahon and Howard Stern came on about it. I think it's just an irony behind the fact that Howard Stern's the one that's going to ask him about it. But what I want to do more than anything else right now is I want to take what The Rock did on SmackDown and just go back and really just appreciate what he did to that crowd and how well he went over doing his work on SmackDown this past weekend, because really he did a, a great return and he joined the bloodline and the whole setup was really good. We don't need to play the whole segment, but there's a lot we could take off of this that he did a really good job of because seriously, it's, it's a masterclass. 
you you ask yourself first of all, does the Rock still have this in him? Because I think some some people might feel like that might be something that would not be the same, right? Sure, he might not have that kind of feeling anymore. He might not be able to pull the kind of promos like he did anymore, especially being the heel. But he did, and he did a great job of it. And here's what he did. Now before The Rock dropped some gospel on you, The Rock has got some good news to share. Something that's going to make you happy, something that you can own. Tonight, it is official. You all, right now, live on Fox, have broken an all-time indoor attendance record. Not only... What a troll. Excellent work here. Not only for the city of Salt Lake, but for the entire state of Utah, congratulations. So, he gets the face time right here the crowd cheers and then he starts laying into salt well, lake city well here's the record you broke you broke the all-time record for the largest gathering of trailer park trash the rock has ever seen this is brahma bull rock you know of the day after nation domination now if you didn't like that you're gonna love this Finally. Oh, you want to boo that, huh? Are you sure you want to boo the rock? This is not Hollywood Rock, by the way. This is not. Finally. Your life has meaning. Finally, you and your 50 wives will have a story to tell. And you know what I'm talking about. You'll have a story to tell your 600 inbred grandchildren one day. And that is what it's like to look at greatness in the flesh. Because finally, The Rock has come back to Salt Lake City. This is not Hollywood Rock. For anybody who wants to say it, it is, it's not. This is a new, improved, it's just an updated version and he's doing much better That's what we needed he's got to get the crowd turned around you all have bought a side out of the rock that you haven't seen in years But you see, this side of the rock has always been in here. Always. You shut your mouth, fatty. The rock will come out there and slap the herpes off your lips. That's like a Ric Flair kind of throwback right there, but it's so good. It's a side that you haven't seen the rock, but it's been in here all along. And you know why you're seeing it tonight? Because it's the rock and Roman Reigns. The biggest the biggest WrestleMania main event in the history of WrestleMania. You had it in your hands and you let it go. He's looking at the bloodline when he says that. You flushed it down the toilet. The same toilet you sat your fat asses on and you sat there and tweeted, we want Cody, we want Cody. Cody's got to finish his story. He got to finish his story. You're laughing now and you're booing because you know it's true. Let The Rock ask you a question. Let The Rock ask you a question. What is Cody's story? What is the story? Let The Rock make it clear. My cousin Roman Reigns, the universal champion, beat Cody's ass last year at WrestleMania. He beat him. Cody lost the match, and now all of a sudden, Cody wants a rematch? That's his story? That's not how it works. I Don't love what he did right there. We're going to move along a little bit, but... Like I said, he just continues to move along here and then makes the point of Cody, the fact that, you know, losers don't get a, a second chance to go and go rematch. But like he said, now, this is not Hollywood Rock. The promo 
he was really laying it on thick to make sure that whole crowd had go ahead and turn. You had to get the full heel turn complete here because of the announcement was made and all the stuff that even led to it. Again, a heel turn like this for The Rock, such a, such a polarizing figure, that's such a legend that you would think it would be hard to go ahead and turn him heel, but it's been done. And The Rock not losing his luster. He is he has not forgotten the way he cuts promos. Okay? This is exactly what he did in 97, 98, 99. This was the stuff he did. And it wasn't goofy. This was serious. And it's the serious heel rock that we need now to work with Roman Reigns, to deal with Cody Rhodes, to set that all up. It's the right thing to do. You talk- now, with that, I mean, we could talk about other things that go along, but like a seriously, what he did was magical. And it's like, how many other stars do we know right now in the company that can really grab that attention? Sure. Seth Rollins, Kevin Owens, we can say that. Sure. Okay. But I mean, it's one thing just for someone like, uh, like the rock to come right in and automatically remember They've gone through the ridicule. They've gone through all their stuff. The st- bloodline storyline. If I, you remember hearing me hear this say this like last week, the family tree, every wrestling company needs to jump on top of that storyline for themselves and attach themselves to it. Who, if you have a Simone wrestler, you have a way to attach them. You need to do that now. And as quickly as possible. So MLW, you get Jacob Fatu up and going juicy for now. You get those guys involved. You make the point that say they call out Rock and Roman Reigns for Gates of uh, Gates of uh, Agony. Same thing for AEW. Okay, you get them talking. You get them up and going. That's what you need to do for all these companies. They need to be doing that part. Back to the Rock. Took the beating like men, and they moved on. And they worked their asses off to get right back to the top. That's what they did. That's not how the real world works. The real world doesn't work like that. You don't get a shot at another story just because you want it. That's not how it works. And you don't understand that. You don't understand that because you're spoiled, entitled, little crybaby bitches. I love the crybaby stuff coming out there. He's selling it good. And it doesn't matter to the crowd doesn't Cody chant Rhodes, back. Make one thing perfectly clear. The Rock is going to do everything in his power to make sure that you walk out of WrestleMania what you are, which is a loser. Everything in his power to make sure that happens. Cody, your story is just ending. Our story is just beginning. The bloodline, the most powerful dominant duo in sports and entertainment, and of course in the WWE. If you some man, no, 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 no. Salt Lake City, sing along with the Rock is over. That's a, that's a that Hollywood Rock thing he dropped. Sit there yes. and shut your mouth and enjoy the ride that the Rock is taking you on. If you some man. What the bloodline is cooking. And in terms of live, yeah, he might have missed in a couple of things. That's fine. Little nicks and, and, and crannies. But you know what? Nooks and crannies. It doesn't matter. That can all can be fixed in post. The other thing you got to watch, watch too is if you haven't watched it to the WWE social media, Cody, uh, so here are, Corey Graves and Wade Barrett <laughs> falling apart when they hear The Rock just, <laughs> just dropping you know, promo cutting right now and just tearing up Salt Lake City, which was fantastic. But really, that is everything that WrestleMania is all encompassing about. That's the main story. That's what we want to go and focus on and hopefully get something out of this where we get on both nights. It's great stuff. No doubt about it. By the way, the segments, let's put it like this. I'm looking on a couple different views so the main feed for on YouTube for the rock and rains link the SmackDown, that's 3.3 million views. WWE on USA, 789,000 views. So again, 4 million views right off the bat for something that happened five days ago, 4 million views, pretty solid, pretty solid. 
And just to make that point as well, let's just make that point as well. We just make that point, all right? Metagenics say this too, Because the WWE, when you're looking at what their content is and what's really getting out there and getting a lot of notice, like remember, you just need to see what people are really calling out and what people are really paying attention to that's getting some real play. The clips that get 4 million views, just saying, that really stands out for people. For some of these other clips they have on here, yeah, 150,000, maybe up to 200,000 views, sure. But like I said, I, Michael Chandler calling out Conor McGregor for Raw, that got the most. That was 500,000 views. And they had their little Raw moments, incredible moments. They put that in there. But like I said, then the main event angle with Jimmy and Jay, almost 900,000, right? And all that going on, right? That's fine. But people care about certain matches and certain things that are going on. And you could tell in the, you could tell in the views what's getting out there more and what's getting better. Now, I'll bring up John Cena on Howard Stern. First of all, he did make a point that he says that he has never used performance enhancing drugs, no steroids. And then it was a part they talked, they brought up where John Cena was asked about <laughs> Howard Stern. I was asked by Howard Stern about Vince McMahon, the sexual misconduct allegations. And at the moment, if I'm right, I think we're just waiting for the court date, right? So have we heard anything else about this as of late as to when the court date is supposed to happen? Or we're just hearing other people making comments about it. But that's it. I mean, people are saying it's serious misconduct. Accused of sexual assault and trafficking, all this, but like, where's the court date? Like, that's the part I want to read about. Like, where's the court date? We don't see anything about that yet. But in the meantime, people are asking about Vince McMahon and Howard Stern. Well, of course, he's going to bring it up, but this is very ironic that it's Howard Stern, who, I mean, listen, by enough of what he's done on radio of all these years, he's done enough to also help tarnish. And, you know, emotionally violate plenty of women on his TV, on his, on, on the TV show, the E show, or on his platform at Sirius. All right. Let's just make it that point. It's pretty obvious. And so for Howard Stern to act like he's some, you know, he can be sympathetic. He can be, you know, high and mighty and sanctimonious now. Oh, like he's been purified because he's apologized for it in this last book. So now we think, oh, this guy is like, oh, he's, you know, he's forgiven. Oh, he's okay. He's not, he's, he's atoned for his sins among Hollywood and others. No, no, it doesn't work like that. Own what you did. Okay. Own what you did. Live with it. You built the damn Howard Stern show off of the fact that the E show used to go and do stuff where, and he used to go and complain about other people taking your idea for, you know, using the laser you know, the, the, the lasers, uh, like laser pens, right? And pointing out the imperfections on a woman, right? Or bribing a woman to go ahead and go naked, to go ahead and get some package, like some ring or watches or whatever from Silver Senior Jewelers in Philadelphia, okay? Like the stuff they used to go and do, they get random girls up there to the studio, get them to go and take their clothes off and do whatever they're going to have them do. Like, okay, you did all that stuff all the time. And let's not talk about the other women that you also decided to go ahead and, you know, roast and defame regularly. You think Anna Nicole Smith might have stayed around a little bit longer if Howard Stern didn't decide to go ahead and like take shots at her on a regular basis or Carney Wilson not being all damaged all as well? Okay, fine. So you don't like fat girls. Good. Good for you. But it's like, and I'm not going back to all this stuff he's done about like, you know, the other things you can also say, like, listen, it was a time of the day. But like, it's the fact of the matter that for me, Howard Stern, I used to be a fan. And it bothers me that this is another, just another in the long line of things where it's like, oh, so this guy now, he's the arbiter. Like, we should be paying attention to Howard Stern because he's such, you know, a moral figure. I'm sorry. Your history doesn't, doesn't leave you, okay? You have not washed away in the, the, with the tears that you've brought on that you're such a horrible person, okay? That doesn't go away with you, right? Your history, your track record does not leave, all right? 
you're not going to come out here and do the next like five, six, 10 years thinking, Oh, you know, I'm with Beth and Beth has made me change and you know, all this other stuff and COVID has made me change too. And I'm going to just act like it. Listen, your fans are alienating you by the day. You've also alienated a couple of people that also have not helped either. When you decide to go ahead and, you know, take down some of the folks that help build, get you up to where you are. Sure. You got a good, fat, healthy ego, Howard. Sure. You do. You know, all these other people, that, you know, I'm not worried about the whack pack. Fine. But you also decide to go ahead and, you know, use them and exploit them for their, for themselves, for what they did. Right. You weren't worried about that. And, you know, you have the people in your town and your roster that you've had on that were either producers or people in the background. Yeah. yeah. Of course they weren't that big a deal because they're not you, but maybe they kind of contributed their way to get up there, but you don't care. You know, it doesn't make a difference to you. People that actually were in the round table hosting the show with you might've been in a way or were your joke writers or would have contributed in other ways. All right. But Howard Stern, you know, he is still like a serious interviewer. And like I said, years ago, Howard should, Howard should, Howard should have not have signed. He's on another deal right now. Right. And then the other deal before that, like he should have fine stay 10 years of serious and do your thing. But I would have preferred he dropped the radio show. What? I want to say like what? 10 years ago. Yeah. Something like that. 2012, 2014, whatever it was when the last contract went away. He should have went ahead and gone into his own TV show and just do interviews because he's good at that. If, you know, you could have also legitimized yourself and not worry about like having to go ahead and, you know, you confess your sins to everybody out there that just because you can use that as another way to go ahead and, you know, keep your career going, make yourself relevant. Oh, so change your political views altogether. You know, oh, that you're no longer the sex craze maniac divorcee. No, you're like with kit. You you have you have your pets, and you got your you, you know you got your millions of dollars, and you got your mansions, you got your wife, right? Yeah, you, know, you got this whole other life that you got. You're all this extra healthy, and oh, you're like you're such a role model. No, you're not. Why are you acting like something that you're not? And th- this whole thing is just it's it's fake. We know it's fake and everybody else should know it's fake. Like, are you really bringing an audience with what you're doing right here? What you're getting an audience for is the fact that you can still get your guest coordinators to go ahead and get guests like John Cena, who's coming on because he's got a prime video pro, a pro a movie coming out, riggedy schmickety, whatever it's called in March. And he came on for that. And of course, John Cena is going to have to confront with certain questions about things. Right. And our Stern still gets some good segments and, and information out. Like, I mean, he talked to Billy Joel last week, right? After he comes out with his new song, that's good, but decides to go ahead and confront John Cena about the Vince McMahon allegations. And I'll say John Cena didn't do a great job of trying to defend or just trying to go and make a good point about it. I think John Cena got stumped, would have said a lot more with a lot less. We're only going to play a little bit of it. How do you handle, this is a tough one. I know you love the WWE and you love Vince and everything. But now Vince has gotten himself into hot water. What the fuck? Like, I have a couple of friends who have gotten into hot water, let's call it. And it's so goddamn confusing. Because you love the guy. And at the same time, also, you don't love what he's being accused of, obviously. What is? What do you do? I mean... By the way, can Howard kind of explain what it is? Hot water. I mean, yeah, the audience might be already in tune with it, but you make no point of what the allegations are. You don't make a point like set up John Cena with the question. Okay. You know, from your experience, what do you think about the fact that he's being accused right now of sex trafficking and, and rape? I mean, you know, you've had a lot of time with this man to work in your career with him. He, you, you find he's one of the people that he's most responsible for helping you build the movie career that you have today, movie and TV career. So what do you say about this, where he's right now under a shroud of controversy and could be possibly feel, really seriously dealing with some charges, civil and criminal, but that's not what we got. You know, it's just a very bland answer. And that was on purpose so that John Cena can go ahead and just fumble around with this answer. How do you handle those situations? I, I mean, well, I don't know how to handle them. Well, so how, how do you handle yours? Well, 
it's interesting. There is some. So I don't mind John Cena pushing back because, you know, Howard Stern knows this certain people. He brought up the fact that he knows people that were all caught up in controversy. Right. But, you know, then John Cena has to try to come back and try to answer. Like I said, it wasn't good. I have to do what I morally think is right. And unfortunately, it's not to associate. But you, this is a guy who's been so. See, uh, you know, oh, not to associate. It's like. Yeah, Howard Stern doesn't want to go ahead and have any loyalty to certain people from his from his past. And like, you know, if people start going down by the wayside. Oh, OK, then that's what he does. But that means he has no loyalty among friends. And by the way, if you're not above water and above ground in terms of what you're doing to make sure that you're not doing anything that could also be criminally or civilly negligible, all right, you know, it's it's about the people that you're around and who you are. But Howard decides to go and just dismiss that. System that the balance shifts of like, man, I I can't operate in a world where this works. Yeah, that's that's the end result of being accountable. But there's what also going to do though. I, I, so um, right now, what I'm going to do is love the person I love, right. be their friend, and by that it means like, hey, I I love you. Uh, you, you got a hill to climb, and you know there's a um, the saying of like, hey, you, you you don't know who you are, or you don't know who your friends are until the shit hits the fan or your back's against the wall. That yeah. that doesn't make any of what's going on any easier to swallow so like i said john cena gets hit with a very vague question this is like just a, a real wussy work around that howard decided to go and pull off with it which is a good interview technique okay and john cena really you know got caught on the spot it's live you can't turn around like this is not one of those you know press junkets where they can go and edit this after the fact it's live so howard caught him and John Cena sounds like he's, there's a couple of things he's already being caught up. The PED story, that's one thing. But then the other part about where he, you know, is trying to get him to say something about Vince McMahon. And John Cena is kind of like taking this vague, vague question and having to deal with it. Listen, I mean, and he has to weasel around it because he's trying to go and make sure that he keeps his career intact. Because what Howard Stern's doing right now is by trying to get him to go and say something that will kind of say something positive about Biz McMahon. Like right now, the, the press is not good about it. John Cena needs to be steering away from it. Okay. John Cena is going to get caught up in it. Thanks to Howard Stern, because he's decided to go and throw him under the bus. And I don't know if that was the kind of the intent or not, but like, that's one of those things that I just thought like, man, that's just shitty. That's very shitty. You're going to do that. So I make that point as well. I wanted to bring that point. All right. A few other things they're going to bring up before we wrap things up. And here's what I got about this. So, AEW has one story that came up with their headlines. By the way, they got their show coming up next week with Revolution, which looks pretty promising as well. Let's just make a couple of points that we got in terms of uh, so they'll be in Greensboro and Coliseum, Greensboro, North Carolina. TNA No Surrender will be held at the Alario Center in New Orleans. And so far, Moose versus Alex Shelley in a No Surrender match of the TNA World Heavyweight Ta Championship. TNA Knockouts World Title, Jordan Grace versus Jashel Shaw. Chris Saban versus Mustafa, Mustafa Ali for the X Division title. That's good. That's a good fresh match. TNA World Tag Team Titles, ABC versus the Grizzled Young Vets. And the Knockouts Tag Team Titles with Road Decay against the MK Ultra. PCO versus Khan, Josh Alexander versus Simon Gotch. Congratulations to Josh Alexander. They decided to exercise his contract option to renew his contract or to extend it, excuse me. And Brian Meyer, Brian Myers and Eddie Edwards will take on Kushida and Kevin Knight in the countdown to No Surrender. So that's coming up tomorrow night. PNA Plus. And if I had to go and give any kind of thing, I think Moose will retain. Jordan Grace will retain. Everybody's going to retain their titles. I will take Connor for PCO. I'll take Josh Alexander for Simon Gotch and go with that. Well, I'll go and take that out and see how it goes on and what we got about that. Maybe if I get some time to go and catch it, maybe I'll bring up something about this during Elimination Chamber at the end. So I'll let you know about that. And as for Revolution, we have 
AEW World Heavyweight title on the line. Samoa Joe defending against Heyman, Evan Page, and Swerve Strickland. Orange Cassidy against Roderick Strong for the International Championship. Eddie Kingston against Brian Danielson for the Continental Crown. Women's World title, Tony Storm versus Diana Perazzo, which is a great feud they got going on right now. Sting and Darby on Sting's retirement match against the Young Bucks for the World Tag Team titles. Will Ospreay against Konosuke Takeshita. AWTNT Championship with Christian Cage going up against Daniel Garcia. A good setup for that match tonight, by the way, as well. And Black Bull Combat Clubs, John Moxley, Claudio Castagnoli against FTRs, Dax Harwood and Cash Wheeler. And then Meat Madness, which one I'm not sure what it's going to be, but Wardlow had a pretty fiery promo, and he's supposed to take on somebody. Open challenge at Revolution. And as for Elimination Chamber this weekend, I'll make predictions right now. I'm going to pick Becky Lynch to win the Elimination Chamber, and she'll take on Rhea Ripley. Rhea Ripley will defend, will defend and retain her women's world title. I'm going to take Logan Paul to win the Elimination Chamber match for the men. Judgment Day will retain the tag team titles over Tyler Bate and Pete Dunne, New Catch Republic, whatever they call themselves. And Grayson Waller Effect with Cody Rose and Seth Rollins. We got that coming up. So there you go. Interesting all together that what they're going to plan to do out. So WrestleMania, we're on the road to it. Elimination Chamber comes up now this weekend. I will do a post show about that. So again, look out for that this weekend. It'll be somewhere on Saturday night. We'll make sure to get it out there for you. And in the meantime, that's it. That's the show. Kingofpodcasts.com is where you find all the content for you. It's truly a lot of wrestling this weekend. I got a lot of movies to watch this weekend as well. So I got a lot to go and catch up on. But you can find all my information when it comes to all my social media, all my other programs that I do as well. YouTube channel at King of Podcasts. Please subscribe, like, and share if you haven't done so. And come back for another Wrestling Through Podcast because wrestling needs us.